Okay. So I, I took my title from a paper by uh, William Bill Thurston, a very famous mathematician, a very fine mathematician, who was also interested in topics in mathematics education. And in this paper, Thurston first described mathematics as a tall subject. He described the wonderful structures we can build layer by layer through proof and reasoning. But then he went on to say that mathematics is also a broad subject with connections reaching out in all directions, uh, except that we very often don't teach it that way. Our mainline curriculum is designed to get students into calculus in grade 12. And with that goal in mind, we very often don't take the time to broaden the base and to make those strong connections. And so at some point, Thurston said, that tall and spindly structure that we build just falls over. For the calculus teachers in the audience, I want to make clear the problem is not calculus per se. It's a fine course. The problem is the weakness in the curriculum that arises when you take this dominant view that calculus should be the end goal of high school mathematics. But wait, I hear you say, shouldn't students see calculus in high school so they can do better in it when they encounter it in college? Uh, the data doesn't show that. This next slide is uh, a comparison of college calculus grades of students who've never seen calculus in high school, bottom line. Students who took calculus in high school but didn't do well in the AP exam. You see, there's no difference between them. Of course, we'd like students to go beyond calculus one. That should just be the start. But far too many students don't. Only about half students in calculus one ever get into calculus two. And that suggests to me these students are taking calculus because they have to, because of their program, and not at all because they really want to. University of Illinois has some very interesting data, lots of it, suggesting that student performance, even in later calculus courses, depends very strongly on how well those students know pre-calculus mathematics. Again, a strong argument for getting that foundation right. So let's go back to Thurston and think about some of the things that Thurston suggested. Reasoning in mathematics interconnections, many interesting side branches. <laughs> Let's think about reasoning for a minute. We can always ask students to add up numbers, or we can ask students to reason about what happens when you add up three consecutive numbers, for example. Think about the exploration, the conjecture, the reasoning that students would have to do to, go to answer that question. We certainly want students to be able to compute, but good mathematics and good mathematics experiences for students should be based on reasoning primarily, not computation. And I'll argue that the better you are as a mathematician, the less you will have to compute, because you'll find other ways to solve the problem. Think about interconnections. How many of our students really understand that fractions are just numbers? So operations on fractions are exactly the same as the operations on the whole numbers that they're presumably more familiar with. How many of our students think of fractions like this? And I wish I could say this is a joke, but I actually found this in a mathematics textbook in a college in Wisconsin. I'm not going to tell you which one. Um, another example, think about geometry, think about area. How many of our students have a really good conceptual understanding of area? How many of them could use that conceptual understanding to find the volume of a region without resort to formulas? <coughs> How many of them would realize that they could actually work from simple areas to more complex areas by using broad principles like these moving and combining properties of area? Uh, move on to middle school. How many of our middle school students would realize that the Pythagorean theorem um, is really just a theorem about area? And it, too, can be justified with those same moving and combining principles. How many algebra students understand that the, uh, the distance formula is just a restatement of the Pythagorean theorem? So they really don't need to memorize the distance formula. Uh, McLeod's rule of formulas, never provide your students with a formula that you can't expect them to justify. And then expect them to justify it. That should be part of their problem. Side branches, you may be surprised that I've mentioned geometry and statistics here, but three-dimensional geometry particularly, we don't emphasize very much. And do you really get to that statistics chapter at the end of the textbook every year? Um, modeling real, real-life applications, we need to do a lot more of that. Um, a couple of my favorite side branches that you won't find in the standard curriculum, spherical geometry as a contrast to Euclidean geometry, so students understand what a fuss we're making about them. And good number theory examples. 
So what would happen if we concentrated more on breadth? Will we provide our students with a greater variety of meaningful mathematical experiences? And there's a lot of evidence in the cognitive science literature these days that greater variety will lead to greater retention, probably also of calculus. Thank you.